All right, guys, what's up? Data Daddy here this morning, and we are going to talk about the newest project I've been working on. And this is this and other live things are one of the reasons why I haven't made uh, uh, a video in a while. But I've been working on getting a new server set up, and this is an eight GPU. You heard me right, eight GPU server. It's the Super Micro. Um, 4028GR-TRT, and this is going. This is my, and hopefully will be your favorite new daily driver um, AI MLDL rig. So that's what we're going to go over today. This is going to be part one in a, I guess say a small series uh, of videos. But in this in this part or in this particular video, we're going to go through uh, kind of the why. So why would you need this? Why did I build it this way? Why did I select the particular components? Um, all of these things that will go into uh, part two, which is where I'll actually show you how to build the this server or how you might build it. Everything from literally getting out of the box or having all the components kind of set on the ground. And then we'll go from there all the way through to um, completion, where you actually can use the server for um, you know, modeling or whatever, whatever your end application is. Um, and then finally, in another video, we will look at how to build um, an external rig uh, for this server. So basically, there are some of the GPUs don't actually fit. The, the 3090s don't actually fit in the server. So I had to build an external rig. Uh, and there's been a lot of interest in general about how to build external rigs. So we'll have a, another video just on that. And I'll try to make it more general, not just for this server, but for any server you might want to kind of use this strategy with. Okay, so the first thing I think we need to talk about, guys, is why would you even want, um, you know, to use this particular server? So let me swap over here now that I'm done with the introduction. And we'll go over here. And the way that I want to do this is I'm going to start by touching generally why you would even want to go this route. And then once we do the kind of the general we'll talk a little bit more specifically about why you would want to go with this machine. Um, and then we'll address each of the components and where I got them. And then we'll do a final cost breakdown um, of all of this before we move on to part two. So firstly, let's address why you would even want to go this route. Why would you want to buy your own hardware? Why would you want to um, you know, fool around with any of this stuff? And the reason is, well, I guess, what are your options, right? So we'll start there. So you have buying your own hardware, which is what I'm going to pitch in this video is why, you know, it would be a good idea. Um, and then you have going with the cloud-based service or solution. So something like AWS um, or Azure or Google Cloud or, you know, one of the other um, cloud providers, maybe Linode, um, maybe other some, some other smaller, maybe more targeted service. But... Anyway, the point remains the same. Um, you know, you are going to use some some sort of cloud provider, and you're going to use their hardware. Um, and then the other one is almost like even even more um, focused approach, where you're only you don't even have any you don't have full control of the hardware. You just have you know one functionality, which is I would say things like Google Colab, Kaggle where you can basically have a notebook and you can run things there, which has access to underlying GPU and hardware elements. So that's one option. Those are your options basically. And, um, the, the last one I just, I just touched on. So like Colab and Kaggle, those are really, those are great for experimenting, but they're really not suitable for, for, for managing large projects or, or using long term. Um, they time out after a long time, uh, access to the underlying hardware is unreliable. You're not going to get the same one every time. And re as of late, they've started becoming, you know, way more expensive. Like Google Colab now, you have to buy compute units. And, you know, if you actually price it out, you'll find that it quickly becomes uh, expensive to use long term. Now, um, next thing is cloud computing. And that's popular for a lot of businesses and a lot of um, companies are going that route and 
you know, nothing wrong with that. If you don't, if you have the money and you don't want to fool around with the hardware, that's probably a better way to go because it allows you to focus more on, you know, creating the, you know, the software side of things rather than having to worry about, you know, the hardware you need to get there. But what I will say is this is quite a bit expensive. Um, you know, when I, I, I've done this comparison in, in previous videos, so I don't want to be a, a dead horse, but um, what I will say is that can be anywhere from um, many hundreds to many thousands of dollars per month, depending on per month, mind you, not you know per year, but per month uh, to access the same kind of hardware that we would have here. And you know this would probably be you know maybe even tens of thousands to rent a month for as much for for what we're about to build. So you got to keep that in mind as well. This you could use for years. That you could pay you pay monthly. So really, to me, cloud computing in that sense only makes sense if you have some sort of business objective if you're going to eventually make money with it um, and that you can kind of use that income to offset the costs so that's my two cents there now finally why would you want to go this route well this is in my opinion the most compute that you can get for your money um, and it's not only that you have full control over your hardware so you can set this up any way that you want you can break it down, um, you know, remove components, add components, make it as targeted for whatever your end use case is as you want. So that's why, you know, not only can you buy used components and make things cheap, so you get the most compute that you can for your dollar, you also have full control. So that's why I advocate for this, especially if you're a small business or you are a, a PhD student like myself and you have the you know the desire and the, and the, the money to kind of go this route. Um, you know, or you are an enthusiast. I think this is, this is a great use case. But this is really targeted to people that, that use th this particular video and this series in general will be targeted more to people that are using this every day or will eventually be using this every day. This is why it's, you know, the daily driver, right? So I'm trying to get the, the machine that is the most efficient and most cost effective for people that want or interact with, um, you know, AI, ML, DL uh, every single day and our training models multiple times a day. So how does that, how do we make that the, the most efficient it can be, um, you know, for those type of people? And this will, this on, on the spectrum of, you know, machine learning, this probably falls uh, about, I would say in the middle, you know, this is, this is a pretty, pretty beefy rig. So maybe mid to like touching into advanced, depending on what kind of GPUs that you put in there. Um, but, you know, there are, much higher levels that you could probably much higher levels of compute you could probably get to and it just really depends at, th at this point on what gpus that you put in here and how much money you're willing to throw at this so that's why I'm, I'm saying this is probably a mid to um you know maybe getting into the advanced or more advanced setups um but i do think this is a great daily driver and i think this is a good cost effective solution for you know the majority of people and the great thing about this is you can modify and change this in any way that you want, depending on what your particular use case is. So I know it was a, it was a kind of a long intro, um, and but hopefully that should cover the specifics of you know why you might want to choose this solution, um, and then also uh, why you would want to maybe go in in in. Uh, in this particular direction. So now we've touched on the the general and then also kind of the use cases and who this is targeted for. Let's talk about this particular server because there are other options. Um, there are, you know, actually quite quite a bit of servers. HP makes a great one. Um, there is one I was actually looking at the other day uh, which is a, a gigabyte server, which you can fit, I think, six GPUs in it. So there are, um, these are, I believe these are, these are coined high density uh, GPU servers. So the super micro falls in that category. And all of these are basically targeted, you know, for uh, the machine learning AI DL revolution that's happening at the moment. And um, <clears throat> I like this one particularly, one, because I think it's the most cost effective. I also like the way that the, the, the GPUs fit in. Um, so I've looked at quite a few, a lot of the other ones fit in weird ways and looks like they would have issues with cooling, but this one kind of gets around a lot of those issues with the neat design. So 
Anyway, let me, let's reintroduce because it's been a really long intro. So this is a Supermicro 4028GR GPU ready dash TRT. It's a four unit server. This particular one we're looking at is bare bones, meaning there's nothing, there's no CPUs or RAM or anything that comes with it. So, and that's good, and, at least in my case, because I wanted to build all that out custom. But you can get other flavors that have a lot of this already integrated. There's actually, I was looking at one and it's called the serverstore.com and I'll, I'll link that in the description in case you wanna go that route. But that, you, that allows you to pre-configure and kind of buy the server with whatever you want already installed. So if you don't wanna fool around with actually putting the hardware in or um, you know finding it, you can always go that route. Um, <clears throat> okay, so next, uh, you know, as you can see, it's, this is almost exactly the way that it came. So four unit server, um, you know, pretty, pretty basic looking from the outside. Um, in the back side, we have four power supplies. I think they were like a thousand watts a piece. I'll have to double check on that. I'll, I'll link the specs, the, the total specs for this in the description as well. But the most interesting thing is it, it says with uh, this X10 DRG dash OT plus minus CPU, GPU board, blah, 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 blah. So that's actually talking about this back piece here. That's a, there are other variants of the server that don't have this, this GPU board basically, which is in addition to the underlying motherboard um, that basically allows for all of these GPUs to be installed. So what you're looking at here is the ability to fit in four, um, G, four two slot GPUs on this side and then four two slot GPUs on this side. So for a total of, uh, eight GPUs in the back uh, put in vertically with full 16 lanes uh, access, which is absolutely incredible. I've, I've never seen another GP or another server uh, or not many that have eight. I've seen a lot that have six. Um, so eight is incredible. And especially to have them at full 16 PCIe lanes is super nice. So one, two, three, four, those all are 16 lane slots and one, two, three, four, those all are 16 lane slots. This guy right here, he's gonna be an eight lane. Uh, and I think this guy is as well. So these two here, those are both eight lane. And then this guy right here is only a four. Um, I know they're all 16, but they're, they only have, you know, a certain number of lanes actually allocated by the um, motherboard itself. So I just wanted to touch on that while I had this statically available for us to look at. Um, and then under the shroud here, or whatever you call this, this, this divider, um, there's actually 12 volt EPS power that's coming uh, for each, basically four here and four here for each of these GPUs. So it's, it's, it's made and designed to have GPUs installed. Now it's geared for the, the Tesla series GPU. So think about the uh, P100, P40, V100. So basically anything with the, the Pascal, the Volta, uh, I think even the Kepler series should work in this. Um, and then I'm sure up to the Ampere would, would also work. I haven't, haven't verified that, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work. But for me, those are cards away to my price range anyway. So, um, you know, <laughs> maybe one day I'll get there and I can make an update for that. All right, so that was a really long winded way of talking about this, guys. And let's go just look at a, some of the brief specs about what come with this particular server. And then I'll also link just the general super micro specs so that you can see um, how everything normally comes uh, on this particular server. <clears throat> so as you can see, um, there are no CPUs. So we gotta get those, there's no memory. There's 24 DEM slots though, which is nice. Um, there's also 24, um, 24 hard drive, 24, 2.5 inch bays. So for bays for 2.5, 2.5 inch drives, SSDs. Um, and, but the caveat here is that only eight of them are working or only eight of them are actually configured to work out of the box if you want. And I'll go into this more in the setup video, but just know, and this is one of the things that I wasn't sure before I bought is that only eight of them actually work. So these guys, uh, let's see, these guys right here. These are going to be the ones that work. And then there's two SATA ports in the back, like in the server, which you could kind of rig up with maybe some loose drives for a total of 10. But your maximum you're going to get is 10 without having to cannibalize some of the PCIe slots in the back. 
Um, so do keep that in mind. And there's also some other complexity with there's two SATA controllers here, which makes RAID setup a little interesting. But again, I'll get into that in specifically in the next video. I'm trying to keep that out of this video as much as possible. All right, so let's look at that. Um, there's four power supplies. I want to say that they're 100 or 1,000 watt, but I don't remember exactly. Um, it's not hugely important. It, it, this one did not come with power cables, so you have to get those separately. Um, I'm trying to think of what else was important here, guys. Um, it's pretty much all I really remember. Um, but yeah, so if you go this route, just keep that, keep those things in mind. And then the other thing, the last thing is that it says 700 bucks, which is a ridiculously good price for this amount of, um, compute or this, this structure that will allow us to, you know, have this much compute, but it is super heavy and it ships this one, at least from California. Uh, and you do have to pay a $350 fee. Uh, shipping fee for uh, freight delivery. So that increases the cost here quite a bit from the sticker price. So just do be aware of that. Okay, so now we've talked about the server. Let's talk about what we're actually going to put in it. So next I chose the, um, so since this is bare bones, and if you, you know, you go into a different, different route, this may not apply to you, it will come with these things already already installed but I wanted the most cores and the highest uh, clock speed, or I guess base clock speed that I could get. And I was willing to pay the extra money for it. So the the thing that fit the bill here was the Intel Xenon X5 2699 version four, 2.2 gigahertz, 22 core processor. And that's two of those uh, for each of the CPU um, CPU slots on on the motherboard. <clears throat> now, one thing I want to mention here is that you can go with either the the, the V3 or V4 for this particular motherboard. Both of those uh, I I know to work. Um, you know I can only verify that the V4 works, but according to the research I did, both of those should work. I don't know if any other C, uh, CPUs will work uh, on this board. So if you want to go a different route, you're gonna have to do your own uh, research to figure out if they're compatible. Okay, um, so yeah, really, there's not a whole lot else to say here. Um, you know, I think for the for for 164 dollars and to get this many cores is is great. I thought it was a good deal. Um, so you know, but this is one place you could save money if you don't need this many cores. You don't do a lot of um, you know parallel programming or you know programming that requires you know a high high core count to speed things up. Then it may not really be relevant for you. Um, so again. This is what I chose. Uh, feel free to you know deviate here to save money or you know for a different use case. All right, next. So we've got our CPU taken care of now. Let's look at the uh, RAM. So I did quite a bit of research and tried to find, trying to price out the best way to go as far as the RAM is concerned. Um, this was another big um, money sink for this project. Um, but it doesn't have to be for you. It just depends on how many, how much you want, how many sticks. But what I always like to do is I like to buy the maximum, buy a, a memory module with the maximum amount uh, of storage per module. So in this case, it's 64 gigs per module. Um, that way, you know, even if I can't afford everything right now, I can always add more later. It's if I would have bought like 16, even though it'd be much cheaper, it would be a lot harder to add later because I would have taken up most of the dem slots. So. That's my philosophy. You know, if you know that you're only ever going to need a certain amount of RAM, feel free to go a different route. Uh, although if you if you deviate uh, from this, you are going to have to check compatibility. Um, so just do do keep that in mind. Um, you know, sometimes you can run into issues with what's compatible, but I I, I know for a fact that this works. Cause that's what's sitting in my machine. Um, but yeah, so. Another thing is, I believe that for this server, there is 128 gig sticks that are available, but the price jump is so significant. Um, it's not like a linear scaling. It's like, it's almost exponential. So um, it's like many hundreds of dollars per one stick. And I just wasn't willing to spend that much more money. So this was kind of where it was the, the best price to, uh, I guess, price to 
memory I actually get. And so, and also it al still allows for scaling. So that's why I, I, I chose these. And this is going to be ECC LR dim. So once you get beyond a certain point, you're going to have to go into this LR dim. Uh, so um, basically it's just lower voltage uh, RAM. And um, that's, that's really all, all that there is to say about it here. So um, I like this route because you can you know, buy as much as you need. You can always add more um, as you get the funds or as you need more. So uh, I, I like that for that reason. All right, so now we've got um, now we have got the server. We've got the CPU for it. We've got the RAM for it, and we now need to talk about. You know, let's talk about this first. Let's talk about the drives. I forgot them, so I made another another version of this video first, and I for, totally forgot to talk about a couple of things. So I decided I was just going to remake the whole video. So if you've already seen this, I do apologize. This is a remade version with a couple other things I forgot to talk about the first time. Um, all right, so now we need some, we need some, we have our, sh our RAM, our short-term storage. Now we need to talk about our long-term storage. Um, so for this, I tacked it in two different sections or two different ways. For me, I always like to set up my server um, with basically a boot drive or a drive where, or I guess a RAID configuration that's going to have um, all of the OS and all the um, stuff that pertains to boot and then files I want to persist, you know, indefinitely on my server. And for that, uh, I normally set up as RAID 1. So basically I'm, I bought a um, two team group, two terabyte, uh, two and a half inch SATA, SATA 3 SSDs. And I've used these, if you watch my videos, I've used these a lot in the past. They're very reliable. Uh, I like them. They have, you know, good price to performance. Um, you know, obviously other people think so as well. So anyway, very solid option. Nothing really a whole lot else to say here. Um, now, so that's that's what we're going to do for the long-term store or the, the one part of the uh, long-term storage. And then the second part is I like to have a whole separate array for just the data that I use. It's just, this is going to be like a um, high volume, um, shorter term, still, still long term, but, you know, not stuff that I'm, that is associated with the OS, I guess I could say. Um, but this is going to be set up in RAID 5. So I went with the uh, Samsung 870 QVO SATA 3 uh, SSDs the eight terabytes. So I know that this is, this sucks. I hated paying 550 bucks for it, but I couldn't find, um, you know, that many other good eight terabyte options. So if you have any, any, any other drives, you know, that are, that are reliable eight terabyte drives, please put them in the comments so I can, you know, <laughs> use them in the future. But as it is, this is what I used. Um, I bought four and I set them up RAID 5, so I lost. Basically, you're losing one for the, the parity bits. Sucks, but, you know, it is what it is. Redundancy is necessary, um, you know, at least in my case. So, so yeah, this is going to be about two grand for about 21-ish terabytes of storage. So, for me, that's, that's enough for my needs. But, again, this is probably someplace a lot of people could save some money. Um, also, if you don't need redundancy, you could set it up in, in different RAID configuration to save uh, storage. So, you know, a lot of this is configurable depending on what your needs are, what your budget is, uh, you know, what level of uh, redundancy you actually need. So if you're not doing this for production or none of this is, is super critical, then you're just kind of playing around, then you probably don't need this and you can save money. All right, next. Uh, and by the way, guys, this will all be linked. This is these are all linked in the cost breakdown, so don't worry about you know trying to see this. You can get it, get this from the video description, um, and the links should you know take you if they're still available to uh, all this stuff pretty easily. Um, next, we need to talk about the GPUs. So, if you watch this channel for any length of time, you know that my my preferred GPUs, um, at least the ones I think are most cost effective at this point. Uh, are the P40 and P100, and those we'll talk about here in a second, but those are ones that I already had, so I didn't actually buy these particularly for this. I just repurposed them for this this build. But I did buy 
these RTX 3090s. And this is the best price that I found. Um, so this is the Zotac GeForce, I guess, flavor. Um, and these are about 900 bucks a piece. I think at the time of this video, they were actually, you know, closer to $700, but things change so quickly with GPU prices. It's hard to, um, you know, it's hard to tell you guys anything because as soon as I publish the video, they, they change. But anyway, at the time of making this video, that is, this is what uh, the price was for these. And I bought two of these bad boys. Um, as you'll see going through the setup video, if you, if you care to watch that part, um, these did not actually fit in the server. So that's one thing uh, to take into consideration. I had to, to, to build an external rig or make these accessible externally uh, through PCIe extenders to use them with this uh, server and really probably any server. Um, you're not going to be able to fit this most likely in a lot of servers. So, you know, maybe you can, and if you can, I'd be curious to know what servers you can fit it in. So if you have done something like this, please let me know in the comments. Um, but anyway, guys, so one thing to consider here, and one of the reasons why I wasn't able to fit it in is because the power, uh, the PCIe eight pins come into the top. So at least in this particular build, they would, you have to almost cut a hole through the, um, the lid to the server in order to plug in power. So not only that, it's just the this form factor is huge and it wasn't, it barely fit in the server anyway. So I just decided it would be better to, to make it external. So that's another consideration guys. If you want to go this route, you will have to, to make an external rig. So just be aware of that. Um, but this I, I think is the, the best, what I would consider mid-level, um, GPU available, uh, at this point, I like this much better than the, the 4,000 series, um, it still has still has uh, NVLink uh, available, which I think is a huge plus. Um, yeah, it's not quite as performant, but it's also not almost too grand. So the price to performance is actually better on these, and it still offers a good mid-range uh, performance and also mid-range level of uh, VRAM. So 24 gigs here, and this should allow you to tackle most things. Um, you know, you may still struggle a little bit when you get into like large language models and some of those some of the like the larger open source models, like maybe the biggest uh, uh, Llama 2 or a Mixtral or, or whatever. I haven't actually tried it myself, so I can't I can't speak on that you know specifically. But I will I will in the future make a video just on on using these GPUs for that, and I can I'll, I'll be more specific as far as what works, what doesn't. So you know I apologize I'm not there yet, but in the future I will have those videos available. Um, for those of you that are interested, because I know that's the, the big thing right now. Um, but uh, but yeah, so this, guys, is what I recommend. You can always go a different route, uh, and you can find something probably be better that fits in your server or in the server. Um, if you go with the Tesla series, they should fit in the server just by default. So that may be a, another better route to go if you don't want to have to fool with making a uh, external rig. So you could always go that route or just, you know, stay with the P40 and P100. So that's totally up to you as well. But if you are going to go this route, you will have to buy PCI extenders. So I chose these. I found this on eBay. These are 60 centimeters a piece. I had to buy two of them per GPU um, because I wanted to put this on a rack next to the server rack. So like a little metal rack next to the server rack. So I needed about four feet. So about 120 centimeters roughly equates to four feet. And this is more than enough for, for what I needed it for. Now, one note here, guys, is that this seller sucks. Um, this is also listed on AliExpress. I bought from AliExpress originally. The order was canceled after like a month and a half, and it was a whole debacle. And then I bought on eBay, not realizing that this is the exact same company, just selling on eBay. Um, so actually, I had a much better experience on eBay, though. Oh, they came a lot faster. And so I, I don't really know. Maybe, um, you know, eBay makes them behave better. I, I don't know. But what I'm saying is order at your own risk here. Um, if you can find a better uh, supplier or um, place to buy these PCIe extenders, especially these long ones, they don't hardly exist anywhere that I could find. Um, one, go that route. And two, please drop it in the comments so that in the future I can 
I can find a better place to to buy this kind of hardware. Um, all right, next, uh, these two GPUs, so P40 and P100. So uh, I've talked about these in other videos, so I'll be a little bit briefer here. <clears throat> but I think these two are the best price to performance that you can get on the market right now. Yeah, people are going to say, are they still relevant? Um, you know, they don't have any tensor cores, so, you know, should we still use them? And my answer is absolutely, because what you're looking at is this is 150 bucks. This is $169. So for the price, you absolutely cannot beat, you know, this level of compute. Now, you, you, of course, you're not going to get the latest and greatest. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to be killing, you know, break any, any world speed records for training or any of this other stuff. But it will allow you to, it will give you access and allow you to at least start working with some of these models. So that's the, that's the main thing here is that this gives you access. It's not going to be the best, but it gives you access and it makes you uh, at least, it makes it at least doable. How about that? Um, another way to go here is you could buy like eight or four of these and four of the P100s and put them in your server and then just go this route. That would be, you know, about a thousand dollars give or take, um, you know, to populate your server with all, you know, with as many GPUs as you want. Um, and then if you were interested in going like the LLM route, for example, you could buy uh, the just all P40s at 24 gigs a piece, and then you could spread or maybe break parts of the, the model across each of the cards. And that way you could get the model to fit, you know, if you wanted to train it or, or whatever, you could maybe get it, you could try that route to, to make it fit, you know, um, there's tons of other, other things that you could do here, you know, just from a, um, a practical standpoint, you know, you could use all eight of these, for example, for training to make the, you know, for data parallelism to make it, you know, eight times, quote unquote, eight times faster. Um, like I said, you could use, break parts of it across multiple GPUs so that you could, you know, get access to bigger models. And then my personal favorite way that I like to use, you know, a multi or a mini GP setup like this is simply just training different iterations of the same model in parallel. So you could assign, um, you know, one GPU to train or a couple GPUs to train, you know, this, this version and then another version, another version that way. So now instead of training one at a time, you can train three and you can, it allows, you know, tuning hyperparameters to, to be way, you know, go way faster. Um, you know, if you want to test out a couple of different things, you can do it, you know, multi multiple at a time rather than just one and having to wait for that model to finish. So all those options I really like. And this is what this gives you access to. This is actually one of the major reasons why I switched and spent all this money to go to a eight GPU workflow or a GPU uh, server simply because I can, it, 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 it speeds things up so much for me that it makes sense. Um, so anyway, guys, that's, that was the, one of the main reasons why I, I kind of went this direction. All right, finally, um, and this is one of the main reasons why uh, I, I am such a, such a fan of the uh, RTX, the 3000 series specifically, is it still allows you to use NVLink. I don't really know why uh, NVIDIA decided to go away from that. I think that they thought that the PCIe 5, the PCIe 5 would kind of render this you know, more or less obsolete, but surprise, surprise, we don't have PCIe 5. And anyway, that's a whole nother story to get into about the 4000 series. I, I, I don't love them personally. I'm excited for the, the 5000. I hope that they'll kind of make some or fix some of the mistakes they made with the uh, 4000 series. But anyway, so this guy, I, I found the best deal on this at Best Buy. So for 80 bucks, um, you can buy this uh, NVLink bridge, so it's specifically for GeForce. I know this works with the Zotax. Um, now, one thing to note, if you're buying different GPUs, if you find like a better deal on the 3090s from a different form factor or a different manufacturer, you may need to buy a different NVLink bridge for that particular manufacturer. Because like they all have different form factors. They all look a little bit different. So just make sure that you buy the correct one here. Otherwise, you may end up with one that doesn't work. Um, so, but anyway, all you do is you pop this on to, to the GPUs. You don't have to really set up or configure anything. 
and it just is a high speed data transfer channel uh, or bi-directional data transfer um, bridge, I guess you could say, between the GPUs. It doesn't make them one GPU, but it does make the data transfer between them significantly faster. So you're not doing it over PCI 3 now, you're doing it over, I think, like, hundred, like hundreds of gigs worth of uh, transfer speed. I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but anyway, this, this makes things much faster, or at least on paper, it should make things much, much faster. I'm curious to actually do some some hard testing and get some numbers here, um, but my initial thoughts are this should make things significantly faster um, when working with larger models, especially and larger amounts of data. All right, so that's hopefully this time I've covered all the components. I made made additional revisions to last video, and then I had to remake the video entirely because I, I left out the um, the uh, drives from this video, so it wasn't it wasn't totally accurate. So anyway, I am hoping that I made I put everything in this video. So let's hope this one this one gets it. Um, all right. Now, last thing is I wanted to just put everything on on paper to put all this in perspective. Um, so this is just all the items kind of listed as they were on their particular um, provider or their particular platform, I guess you could say. Um, and then I have the price, and then the quantity, and then total, and I total everything up, and then just some, some notes, um, you know, things that are important for each of these. And then I have the links. So if you're you're curious, this will be in the video description. So just come open this guy up, and then you'll have access to all the links, and you can, um, you know, buy them or look at them or whatever the case is for you. But let's briefly go over this. So Super Micro, right? This was seven hundred plus the $350 uh, shipping fee. And this was just for the bare bones one. If you wanted to go a different route, you could always you know, buy it. It might be more expensive or less expensive depending on what you add on. But then you wouldn't have to go through the added headache of actually putting the hardware in. Now, I like that kind of stuff, but you know, if that's not for you, you totally understand. We're at a grand here. Uh, and then the, the processors, so that was $649 a piece, but we, you know, 22 cores for you know, pretty high gigahertz. Uh, pretty high clock speed, base clock speed for these. Um, so, you know, I, I was happy with that. I thought it was a pretty good deal. But again, this is one place where you could save, uh, you know, perhaps a little bit of money. Maybe you could buy something with less cores or it's less performant. Um, you know, so because this isn't really the main focus, at least for AI and, and, and ML and DL, you care, at least I care way more about the GPU. You only really need a CPU that's efficient enough or robust enough to kind of feed the data effectively to your GPUs. You know, unless you're just doing uh, tasks that are CPU, like you run CPU heavy computing tasks uh, or like parallel or programs that require a high, high degree of par parallelism, um, which I, I do. So, you know, I, I also bought a performance CPUs as well that reason but it doesn't apply to you you can save money here and then also the ram so this is 71 dollars a stick i went ahead and just filled the whole thing out because i don't like having to open the server up and put shit in new or put things in later so i just went ahead and butt bit the bullet um, and filled everything out as much as i probably would ever want um, i do work on a lot of applications where having you know obscene amounts of ram uh, work at least one application at the moment where it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, you can you can always compute your, you can always program your way around it if you're if you're clever most of the time and get away with a lot smaller amounts of RAM. But sometimes it's nice not have to use your brain and you can just throw things on the um, you know, throw things into massive amounts of RAM. Not have to worry about you know the, the those kind of constraints. So that's why I did it. It makes my life easier, but again, you could probably get by with a whole lot less for most people and most applications. I would say, though, at a, at a, for this level of, of computing, if you're going to go this route, I would, at a minimum, do 256 gigabyte, 256 gigabytes of RAM here. Um, so that would drop the cost significantly here. And then I'll, I'll make some adjustments, and I'll show you guys what it would be like if you were doing other things as well, you know, what the price difference would be. All right, so again, this, another place where you could save a lot of money. Most people probably don't need 
two terabytes of or 20 terabytes of RAID 4 storage. Um, you, know, you could go for a, a lot less. Maybe you want, um, maybe you only need a couple terabytes. You could just buy, you know, a couple of these and, um, you know, go from there. So really, this is totally personal. This just depends on how, how large data you think that you'll be working with, how often you want to clear things off your server, you know, again, th those kind of things. So I, I like to have way more than I need um, because actually I end up always, I always end up meeting the limits at some point. So, um, you know, I try to overestimate rather than underestimate. And then again, the GPUs, guys, this totally personal. You could buy eight of these and that would change your price dramatically. You could also buy eight of these, which would change the price dramatically. Um, so I will say, and also that the, these PCI extenders, um, you may not need four. You may be able to get by with just, um, just two. This really depends on how you're setting things up and what kind of external rig you're gonna try to use. So, you know, you may not need the whole four feet. You might need six feet. So just measure everything out and make sure that you have enough extension to uh, plug, effectively plug into uh, the GPUs and whatever setup you decide uh, to go with. Um, and then here, guys, also, this is optional. You don't need it. But um, I recommend it for $80 in this, the whole grand scheme of things for this build. This is absolutely nothing. And it should make your... Uh, your rig significantly more performant um, you know, if you decide to go the uh, 3090 route. So, um, so yeah, I, I think this, this is a good, this is, this is a very solid build. It's probably too much for some people, maybe not enough for others. And as far as like what the GPUs we have in here, but I would say, let's just look, look at some hypotheticals. I know this video is already running long and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I do try to actually keep these things short, but they all, always seem to run long um but uh so okay let's just say that we got a less less performant cpus we probably buy them for 50 bucks a piece so let's just estimate roughly 100 bucks and then let's say that we only bought we only wanted 256 gigs of ram um and let's say that we won't we weren't going to have any uh of these drives you're we only going to use these guys, and let's say that we wanted, I think eight gigs is, is a good, a good minimum amount. I think that's that's a comfortable amount that you should you should be fine with. Um, and let's say that instead of making all this complicated RAID arrays for boot and not, we're just gonna have one one um, one RAID array. So let's say we're just gonna buy four. We're gonna set about RAID zero, and we're not gonna worry about the rest of it. So there we go. Um, and then. Let's say that we're we're not gonna we're not gonna go for this. We just want maximum number of GPUs. Like maybe you're maybe you're designing this rig so that you can work with large language models. Um, so what I would do probably is I would not buy any of these. And if you're just looking to get into that, I would buy probably eight uh, P40s to give you the maximum amount of VRAM. And then we'll take that to zero, and then we don't need this. So now, look at that. We've taken that. $8,000 build and now we pared it down to just the essentials really for what we need and then we're now at three, uh, $3,300 and able to dabble pretty effectively in large language models and all, all kinds of different things. So the point I'm trying to get out here guys is this is totally customizable. I know that this, the sticker shock down here when you saw eight grand was probably like holy crap I can't believe he paid that much but in the grand scheme of things that's really not a lot of money compared to what all this would cost new. And not a lot of money compared to what you would what you would get with, you know, other cloud-based solutions. So you know, I still think eight grand in the grand scheme of things is really cheap. Um, it's really again, I'm always about price to performance. I think that's one of the best you can get through this kind of mid to advanced level of um, of computing uh, or computing with respect to AI, machine learning, and, and deep learning. Um, so so and then also you could scale it up. You go the other way. You could put everything back way that it was and you could also say all right no nah, I don't want any of these these are these are too too weak for what for my taste and you could you know take these to zero and then you could um, get eight of these bad boys and then you could 
let's see, there's eight now, so that's two per GPU. So let's say two times eight. Oh, sorry. I need to actually put equal sign in there. Okay. And then you could take this all the way up to 13,000, or you could replace this with in, uh, Ampere GPUs like A100, and then the sky's the limit. You could have, you could spend, you know, uh, $30,000 in this rig if, if you if you want it. Um, you know, you would need to make this for, so anyway, so you can see very quickly that this, this can kind of spin out of control depending on what, what hardware that you want to put in it. You could also add more storage. So anyway, point is, I just wanted to give you guys some some numbers as far as how you could build this and what you're actually really realistically looking at. Um, so anyway, guys, that's that's a summary. This has been a very long video already, but I'll leave you with this. I have done an extensive amount of research as far as how you can get the access get access to the most amount of compute, the cheapest, and what's basically what's the most efficient way to work every day with um, you know these kind of models and this was the setup that I came that I came to um, so you know I, I think for me and probably for a lot of people uh, some flavor close to what I, I pitched you originally um, or you know the original would be the best way to go so so anyway guys I'd be interested to see you know what the comments are in this if people agree or, or don't agree um, you know, I know this is a lot of, of upfront cost, but you know, you don't have to do this all at once. You could do this incrementally, um, you know, buy things and then reconfigure them as necessary. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, I, I know this was a lot and, um, but I really hope you got something out of it and we will actually go through, like I said, the building of various parts of this and subsequent videos. And then we will do uh, testing and then I'll do a video on um, power, sound and heat and all kinds of things that surround this if you're interested. So do stay tuned. And, uh, you know, if you if you want to go a little bit deeper, I'll have videos available for you for that soon. So thanks again, guys, for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, brief reminder here. If you enjoyed the content, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe so I continue to grow and produce better and better content for you. If you really enjoyed the content, you might even consider buying me a coffee, and the link for how to do that will be in the video description below. Um, if nothing else, please just give me some feedback and the comments and let me know how I'm doing, uh, if anything's unclear, or if there are anything uh, that I can improve on. Thank you again, guys, and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.